Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Live. I'm Stephen N.T. And I'm Nanekia Mensah-Brapa. Coming up in the headlines this afternoon. How much will a lockdown cost Ghana should the president announce one? Also coming up. We'll be exploring what banks can do to cushion customers in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Well, it's also this afternoon, 300 market centers in Kumasi currently undergoing disinfection and we are live. We bring you updates. And later on the foreign front, the United States overtakes China as a country with the most coronavirus cases as infections reach 85,500. And in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has tested positive for the virus. Right, so uh, pretty shortly we'll be going to our colleagues in the United States of America on Skype uh, to the U.S., Germany and the United Kingdom to have a share, uh, a fair idea of uh, how they're dealing with the coronavirus-related issues in these various countries. Why right, so before we link up with them on Skype, let's go to the Eastern Region where the new Jabin North Municipal Assembly has set up an emergency COVID-19 committee. The 14-member committee is expected to produce a proactive guideline on how the Assembly manages situations. The new Jabe North Municipal Information Officer, Elizabeth Ansan, says the committee will rely on more information from whistleblowers to assist the health team on contact tracing. As at March 26, 15 suspected cases have tested negative out of the 19 suspected samples taken to the lab for testing in the region. Four sample results are pending at the lab. Meanwhile, the new Jabe North Assembly has donated Veronica buckets and other hand-washing items to the St. Joseph Hospital in Kofordia to support in the hygienic practice. The items will be distributed to various institutions. Right, so this is uh, Midday Live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Let me take you through uh, existing statistics uh, and then later we'll be, uh, let's get, first get to Skype and speak with our colleagues uh, in uh, UK and the United States and Germany. But before we uh, talk to you, let me give everyone, all of us, a, a brief idea of uh, what we're dealing with right now from the uh, global perspectives and Ghana perspective. So if we take a look at this right now, we can confirm that Ghana's total uh, case stands at 136. This is us of uh, today by 9.15 in the morning. And the narrative we're getting is that uh, at the as of the morning, of uh, 26th of March, uh, these number of cases have been uh, recorded. I'm taking you through the case narrative. We have, as of a 9.15 update, a total of 58 cases, including three deaths, have been confirmed. We know that. And all three cases, unfortunately, uh, succumbed to the disease, uh, were aged and underlying chronic medical conditions. Now, majority of uh, the cases are Ghanaians. We've, we've, we've been told that consistently, and they come from Norway, Lebanon, China, Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. And the number of confirmed cases among travelers under mandatory quarantine uh, stands at uh, 78. So as you can see there, the breakdown is as follows. Uh, confirmed uh, 58, confirmed here 78. And now we have the total here, which is 136. So let's uh, take a closer look at the uh, global perspective also uh, to have a fair idea of how uh, the situation stands. So as you can see here, uh, we zoom into Accra. Uh, 
and then the figures here indicate exactly how much has been recorded. Uh, a total number of deaths so far is 24,361 uh, total recovered. We uh, total confirmed, I beg your pardon, so far, the global figure, I beg your pardon, is 5 hundred and forty two thousand seven hundred and eighty eight the countries have been listed in that order and you can see Accra here right there and the cases confirmed as of the time this data was input is 24 and active cases 23 but we now stand at a, a total of 136 so let's also uh, take a closer look at the uh, WHO figures as you can see there the countries have been listed uh, and it also list uh, as 465 915 confirmed cases across the globe it gives us all breakdown of their individual cases from uk ireland italy as you can see there we know already that the united states has peaked at eighty-five thousand five hundred. at the time this data was input it was at the sixty-three thousand five hundred and seventy. Uh, but u.s right now has uh, surpassed uh, China and Italy, who previously were the epicenters, the U.S. has now become the epicenter of uh, this. So let me, with this, uh, quickly now go to Skype. Uh, I have our own uh, colleague, Afre, who is in the U.S., and then we have our own colleague, who is uh, in the United Kingdom, and Adelaide uh, from from Odelia, I beg your pardon, from Germany. So, uh, gentlemen and lady, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, how are you feeling this morning? Um, thank you very much for having us um, this, this morning. It's, it's quite a um, um, humbling situation, I must say, you know, with all those um, issues that is currently ongoing with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it is it is quite humbling. Um, you, you walk down the street, there's nobody. Virtually everything is just at, at a standstill here. Mm, all right. Uh, uh, since you are in, in Connecticut, which is uh, very close to New York City, New York City has been very badly hit. How will you describe the case numbers in Connecticut area where you are? So in the Connecticut area, you know, um, the numbers um, did start to soar some three days ago. So right now we stand at about um, 1,012 cases. You know, we have um, 21 deaths so far. Um, but then it's quite also um, good to note that the recovery is also very positive too as well. There are about 250 people who are recovering at, at the moment. And so right now in Connecticut here, um, it is actually a total, um, you know, stay-at-home um, order that is being enforced. So everybody is at home, people who are on the streets or people who are going um, out are people who have to go uh, and deal with um, essential services, people who work for um, essential services, people who have to go to groceries and stuff like that, all food and restaurants, everything actually it's right. Going to shut down right now. Mm. So I'll come to you uh, to later talk about how the lockdown order is being enforced there and how difficult it is for everyone to get by. But let me come to you, Odelia. I mean, after speaking to a man, I'll speak to the woman also. Odelia, I remember that you were caught up in a bit of a challenge where you were initially traveling to Germany. The conference you were attending had to be rescheduled and you were a bit stranded in transit. Now, now, right now, you are stuck in Germany. Technically, you cannot come to Ghana without subjecting yourself to the compulsory quarantine. So how is the situation there for you? Especially also, I know you possibly don't speak German. How are you getting along? Okay, so here in Germany, it is a bit difficult for me because I have to always be in the house. I cannot go out and then because um, when you are on the streets, you would be checked by a police or by authorities as to what you are doing on the street. And then even when you're going out, you need to have some documents mm. on you that shows that um, you're going to work probably or mm. maybe you have um, legal documents for you to stay or walk on the streets. So currently I'm indoors. I am stuck here, as you know. I'm just home. I just wake up, sleep, and yeah. then watch what is going around on 
TV. And then I'm um, talking about um, me not speaking Dutch. Um, well, I'm with a Ghanaian family here, so mm. at least they are being helpful. They translate for me the things I need to hear. Yeah, good. Uh, Kwabra, are you in the United Kingdom? We're just hearing that Boris Johnson uh, himself has tested positive. How how is that? Uh, how is that? Uh, how is that affecting all of you within the United Kingdom? Especially knowing that the Prime Minister himself has tested positive. Yes, um, Steve. Thank you very much, but um, this is uh, this has actually increased the tensions here in the UK, especially when two days ago we heard that Prince Charles has also tested positive. So it has actually increased the tension here in the UK. But where I am currently at Sheffield, um, um, in terms of um, you actually go out and you don't see a lot of people around personal movements have been stri restricted just like it is in most countries like it is in um us germany and all other countries so it's a global thing that is currently happening you actually don't get the chance to move outside or do things the way you are supposed to do it i remember um yes last night for instance one of our colleagues whom i invited home told me that he couldn't come because just when he stepped out he saw um a police team patrolling so they asked him a number of questions and they asked him to go back home so currently that is what the situation is here in the UK. There, it, there isn't a total lockdown of activities here. A few activities are currently ongoing. But then what is happening here? What's the... Right. So, so Kabra, I, I, like to, I like to hold you there and explore this total lockdown you're talking about. I mean, you say there is no total lockdown. Yet uh, when yeah. your friend was stepping out to visit you, he or she was stopped by the police and couldn't do yeah. that. So how do you go about your normal activities of, for example, crossing over to the corner shop to get maybe beef or maybe get a chicken sauce or maybe cross over to the uh, grocery shop to buy even water, etc. How is that working out? I think that's where the challenge is because I feel per what I've experienced so far, I think it has to do with time that, for instance, if you want to go to the hospital for medication or if you want to go for a walk, for instance, it has to fall within a specific time. But that is something that has not been explained so far because the time that I was talking about was somewhere around 9 p.m. And of course, when get, and I want to believe that around that time, it's not really allowed for people to come out, especially now that there's a strict regulation um, in place. But then when, but I've not really seen people, but I'm talk, may, maybe if it has to do in the morning or in the afternoon, you will mm -hmm. be allowed. But then one thing I've also realized is that in the morning, the afternoon, when you are going out, you still get a police questioning you. But then if, for instance, you are going to work and then your work is classified, as um, the essential, essential work sense. that mm. will be allowed to go. But then in the night, you will not be allowed to go. Though, when the Prime Minister was making its announcement, they did not give any time restrictions to it. But right. then it appears that they are going out and it's around 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. You will be questioned and will not allowed be allowed to go unless you are going to work. Right. Uh, so, Afra, uh, let me get to you in the U.S. and the enforcement in the Connecticut area. You were talking about the lockdown. How is that being enforced? For example, I know that in the U.S. there are different category of uh, health workers just like everywhere else. Uh, sorry, different category of workers just like everywhere else. So, depending on the type of job you find yourself in, you may possibly not be able to go to work. So, how is the Connecticut state uh, enforcing the this uh, order for stay at home. So, um, just like um, Edu Jenfi was talking about, so those who work for essential services, which are those who work in the hospital, which are those who um, work for factories, manufacturing factories, um, those who are bankers, because um, the lockdown is the stay at home order. Is, is done in such a way that everybody is staying at home all right, but then people are allowed to go get their groceries during the day. Right. Um, people can go to the pharmacy during the day. Um, people can go get any other thing they want to get in the day. People can go to the bank during the day. But the enforcement is that mm. people must not congregate. People must not gather. People must not be together mm. in a particular area, you know, um, above the number of two. 
and so everything right now um, goes through. So the restaurants are doing drive-throughs right now. You cannot go and order your food in the restaurant. You could you go through the drive-through. The banks are going through the, the drive-throughs as well. Some are using the ATMs as well. And then there's the order for people to stay at home. Mm. Um, so people should be at home. Um, should, people should always be at home, um, not after 8 p.m. So from 7 a.m. in the morning through to um, 8 p.m., you can do whatever you want to right. do during the day. But even with that, you know, you drive on the street and you realize that it is virtually empty because people are scared. People believe that life is very, very much precious and they, they, they want to um, hold on to it. Right. Thank you very much. Odilia, I'll ask you the last question and we'll wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, Kwabina, also. Now, Odilia, I'm sure you're, you're itching to come home to Ghana, right? Yes, I am. But you are unable to do so. Yes, I can't now. Well, what are the plans? Are you still hoping that you'll be able to, the, the, the ban on restrictions will, will be lifted and you will come in and subject yourself to 14 days of being quarantined? <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to come home now because it is very risky and I don't want to risk my life. But in Germany, okay, so it's not risky. It's is it not risky in Germany? Here, where I'm the numbers are here. even higher than it yes. is in Ghana. We yes. only have 136. Come home. Let's get quarantined together. <laughs> Taking the risk to come home is something I'm not right. going to do right Odile, I'm happy. Uh, thank you very much. And keep safe. I, I don't want you to get infected just like we. Uh, everybody doesn't want to get infected. So, uh, Kwabra, we're, we're grateful for your time. And Afro, thank you extremely for joining us. You all keep safe. We love you. And uh, keep healthy. Well, it's good to know they are safe and they are keeping well. Stephen, you really got me there with the questions you were asking, Odilia. And it's like moving from farm pine to fire, I'm I sure. <laughs> and exactly what I wanted is what she said. Well, she says she feels it's too much of a risk. I know, right? But and 14 <laughs> days of quarantine, it's, I don't think she's ready for that. Oh, I don't but think she, she will enjoy. She'll be in a five star. <laughs> and she'll eat breakfast with sausages and milk and all fried eggs. And you think you're having it all like rosy in the hotel? Man, it should be. <laughs> well, you, let's just come back home to Ghana and head to the Western region where there are mixed reactions in the, that region to calls for Ghana to be locked down to contain COVID-19. Whilst sections of the public are in support, others think our weak infrastructure will not support it. Monica Didi Odonko has more in this report. My heart is bleeding. I'm very much afraid. When I'm going out, I'm afraid. I own a, a, a bar and a restaurant in town. I'm in Ghana at the moment, precisely, I'm in Takrade. We all have families. Each time I'm going to work in the morning, I feel sorry for myself and for the people that will come in. Even though we've made measures, we've put down water, soap, sanitizers, but yes, still, it's not enough. People are coming in, going, you don't know who has it. We are all at risk. Where are we going? We don't have anywhere to go. Ivory Coast, they've shut down their borders. We have also shut down our borders with the other countries. Why should we wait for it to get serious before we, 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 we do something? Take initiative. I'm taking it. You to do it. In considering a total lockdown, from my point of view, um, a total lockdown isn't going to be good for the whole of Ghana. Um, looking at our structures currently, um, there isn't any, I don't think so, there isn't any measures put in place that is going to facilitate um, businesses and people um, getting their basic necessities and the other things they're going to need in terms of um, staying at home totally, not, nobody going out anywhere that is in considering a total lockdown. With the lockdown, it will be very difficult. We can't do it now. But rather, I suggest we, the people, should be obedient. We should be making sure that we do what is suggested by our president and the other aspects. And there is an acute shortage of pipes and accessories for the uh, manufacture of Veronica buckets in Sekendita Kradi metropolis following the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, the price of Veronica buckets in the metropolis has shut up. 
Before the coronavirus hit Ghana, the Veronica Bucket was not on the shopping list of many Ghanaians. But since the outbreak, there has been a high demand for the buckets from individuals and institutions. The demand, among other reasons, come on the back of the advice from health experts that hand washing is most effective. Mary Essien sells plastic items at the Takradi Market Circle. She says before the coronavirus, she could go for weeks before selling one bucket, but now sales have tripled. Ordinarily, Mary will contract plumbers to manufacture for her to sell, but she quickly learned how to make it. She has for the past one week been manufacturing the Veronica buckets on her own. Mary can make about 70 Veronica buckets in a day. Yes, but her challenge has been the availability of pipes and accessories for the manufacture of the buckets. First, the price for accessories to make the bucket was 10 CDs, then it went to 15, 25 and even 30 Ghana CDs. The screws are also 5 CDs. I buy the buckets between 25 to 35 Ghana CDs. I do this myself and I make a profit of only 10 CDs. few meters away from me, Mary as Nana Jesse, who has been contracted to make the buckets. I started last week, Saturday. I started. I started last week, Saturday, and I can produce 50 to 80 Veronica buckets in a day. A boy assist a boy 80. Nana Jesse explained he charges five CDs per bucket. Some traders have taken advantage of the high demand for Veronica buckets and now into the business. Before the pandemic, Rose Eusi Anan was selling drinks at the Takradi Harbour taxi rank. She has closed her shop and is now selling Veronica buckets. The cost of the accessories need to be reduced in order for us to make more buckets. For days, George Asa has been looking for Veronica buckets to buy for his company. The news team met him on his third day of search. He's been sitting at this spot for the past one hour, waiting for Nana Jesse to make eight Veronica buckets. Now they are quoting one bucket to be 75 Ghana cities. Even though it's short in the market, if you could see that I have to be here so that I wait for them to do it for me. But apparently the bucket is short in the market now. This thing is supposed to be good for about 50 Ghana cities. Now that's the order of the day, so I have no who am I to not to buy it. Now, as many of you uh, may be grappling with uh, the scare of coronavirus, what you should know is that many infectious diseases also come and go with the changing months, uh, like flu is set to spike when the weather turns cold. So others like cholera, uh, these thrive during the warm, rainy seasons. But will such a pattern apply? even with uh, coronavirus, uh, that's the, uh, the question we're asking. And with the raining season in sight, does it pose any risk for the spread of the uh, coronavirus? Uh, we're fortunate to have Dr. Newman Arthur, he's a medical doctor. He joins us in the studio, and thanks very much, sir, for thank coming. You. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. So should we be concerned that the rain is here and coronavirus is also here? I think the concern wouldn't be the virus itself, but as to the impact of the rain, or how it spreads, mm. and also temperature changes and all that. Because we know that coronavirus does not survive in, in a heat environment. Mm. When the temperature goes up, it's difficult for the virus to survive. Mm. So when the temperature goes down, it's likely it can survive longer, especially on surfaces and all that. Mm. And there are also benefits with the rain. Mm. The benefits have to do with the fact that when it's raining, people don't go out. Mm. So distancing yeah. helps. And also there's been all kinds of studies about you know, rain uh, washing, you know, surfaces and sending them into the sea and all that. So there are some positive sides, there are some negative sides to uh, uh, whether so we should not. So we shouldn't go all gloomy and thinking, who, where did we go wrong? And now we are getting the rains with coronavirus you because, know, you know, the, because the, we'll yes. be fine. You know, the, the rain has its own problems. Okay. In the country now, our focus is on coronavirus. If the rain set in, our focus would be divided because the there'll, rain there'll be flat the, the rain the rain has its own impact on our environment mm. 
and also you know some seasons come with some other viral infections mm. Mm. so some people may also go to the hospital mm. because of there's some flu of, of a sort mm. now also we know cholera becomes an issue in the rainy yeah. season yeah. so now our limited resource we have to divide it to attend to other problems that has to do with with uh, with uh, that rain so, so so would you say that with the onset of the rains and typically you say that the rain come with its own problems we know already uh, but do you get a sense that this will uh, push the health system to the to the brink because then corona yes. is here we're also having to do with perhaps rising cases of cholera which we've had with the rains in the past and there are other issues of flooding people who might get injured who all need medical attention do you get a sense this it's, is going it's, to happen that, that is the concern it's going to push us to to a point where we may not have limited human resource mm -hmm. and also the facility to be able to deal with all the, the problems that are coming up. Because, for example, cholera has a major impact on, yes. on, on, on us, especially with the spread of cholera. Yes. So instead of focusing on coronavirus in a, in a hospital, you may have to deal with cases of cholera. Mm. And that is going to push us to, to, uh, to maybe to our limits. So what would you end. recommend, really, that you... I, I'm asking this on the back of the fact that as public health people, you possibly might say that governments should put in place measures to seek to reduce the incidence of cholera during this period so that uh, medical officers and healthcare workers will, will have undivided attention to tackling coronavirus? The truth is that this season is challenging. It's challenging and... Uh, we may have to now think about... Challenging other. for health workers too? It's challenging, mm. you know, all over the world. Mm. You know, the, the thing with coronavirus, it's not even how deadly, but how fast it's spreading and the impact of the spread on the limited resources that countries have. So now the fight has become more difficult because of the impact on the limited resources that countries have. So if we have limited resources and in the rainy season we have to also concentrate on other things too, that, that becomes important. Then we, we, we are really in, in trouble in a way, right? Mm. So we have limited resources. Mm. This is stretching our resources mm. already. Now we are entering into a rainy season. Other diseases too are going to come up and that is going to be challenging everywhere. Uh, you, you have uh, been noted as saying that we should resort to praying and applying signs as well. I mean, there are people who might wonder, medical doctor, you believe prayer works? I mean, we should be applying the medication. <laughs> you know, you know the, the thing is that, you see, the thing is that God is not against signs. Mm. You know, he's only against the signs that denies that he exists, falsely denies that he mm. exists, right? But true signs, it, it's supposed to confirm that he, said he mm. exists. And also the fact that we true, need both. true science enforces the presence oh, of it, God. It does, mm -hmm. because, you know, we are limited in our ability to do many things. So now the question is not whether religion is bad or science is bad. The question is that how can we marry the two yeah. in order for us to be able to make progress? Because um, God has a, place to, a role to mm -hmm. play. And also science has a role to play. How confident are you that we will overcome coronavirus? If you look at all pandemics, it rises and falls. And this one to rise and fall. Look at Ebola. Mm. Ebola, the death rate for Ebola is about, about 50%. Mm. Coronavirus is less than 4%. So we expect it to, even in Ghana, we right. expect it to rise. But it, it suddenly goes. Doc, we're grateful for your time. Yes. Thank you extremely for yes. coming. Uh, Dr. Newman Arthur is a medical doctor. Now, about 300 market centers uh, are currently undergoing disinfection in the Ashanti region. In Kumasi uh, metropolis itself, uh, 20 satellite markets and main uh, Kijitia market have been closed to allow disinfection against the spread of the coronavirus. Our reporter, William Evans Inkum, has been following the exercise. The disinfection exercise has started and here is the Kedetia New Market. Overall in the Ashanti region, we are talking about 300 market centers that are being disinfected at the moment. In Kumasi proper, we are talking about 21 market centers. Apart from the Kedetia New Market, which is the main market, we are looking at other 20 satellite markets. I spoke earlier with the regional minister. The cooperation from the traders and the general public is excellent. Uh, it's close to 100% uh, as you can witness. There's no obstruction. You don't have any trader here at the KGT. And, and that is what we, we, we want. The central business district is currently deserted just to pave way for this exercise to happen. But again, what will be the implication if there is going to be 
a lockdown. But it's going to have dire consequences on the economy. Don't forget that uh, one, it's not everybody in this country that can afford maybe to have a stock of food for about two weeks or one week. So what happens to those people? There are some people, when they go, don't go out every day to ply their trade, they can't eat. Well, we are not hoping that we get to that level. If we get there, where there are a number of strategies that we are going to adopt to contain the situation. As uh, we are here doing some aspects to contain the situation, is there some aspect? It's broader than the Minister of Local Government and all that. Other sectors, ministers, agencies, institutions are also putting systems in place to be able to ensure a complementarity of it so as to address the, the, the issues comprehensively. If we get there, it means it will affect your revenue because nobody will be coming to the market. Have you already thinking of some innovative ways of keeping your administrative office running as far as the current situation is concerned? We started planning. As of now, we know the number of people that even should the lockdown come, we need to feed them, those who cannot feed themselves, even where they are. Where the deplorable ones are staying, we've gathered all these data. Let's engage the Director General of uh, NADMO. On the front line, yes. should there be a lockdown? Will we be able to cater for the, the situation? The President said something last two days, that we don't just get up and do lockdown. We need to look at all other things. The President is meeting with all necessary stakeholders, so that if there's a lockdown, uh, it's, uh, we have advantages and disadvantages when there's a lockdown. So let's wait for the President. He's doing all stakeholders. Are you prepared? We are prepared. This is still midday live from our studios at Adesawe. Uh, uh, William Evans Inkum needs to uh, have lessons on how to wear those masks very well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of it was hanging around I his know, neck I, area. I, I, I thought he was going to put on his gloves as well <laughs> but, to, so that he makes sure that he is fully I mean, protected. Our frontline uh, journalists, our journalists who are on the field need uh, to get full protective gear. And as you can see, William Evans Inkum is appropriately yeah. attired uh, yeah. to suit today's event. Okay. Uh, that's how serious we take the mm. risk of coronavirus. And I'm sure those also working at home are doing their bit. But how are you uh, enjoying today's social distancing? I see you sitting. I am sitting. Actually. Okay. Yeah. But still, when we return, <laughs> when we return, lots of people are discussing a lockdown. But the big question is, economically, what will be the impact? Your conversation with Afre and uh, 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 Kwabena, you heard what the, the yeah. are experiencing. Are you in favor of a lockdown? Yeah, well, I don't think so. But you, let's see, let's you, see you what other opinions you don't, are. You don't want to go away from your kids, so you want to stay home with them. Et cetera, et I'm, not, I'm not just thinking these about all, my kids. I'm looking at it at a broader surface, not yeah. just my family, yeah. but other families. I'm home. in favor of a lockdown, though. We'll be discussing that when we return <laughs> from the break. This is Midday Life. Stay with us. For a higher bar, her bar center, you will come and say a tonsu agogo, a bind hospital, night you hall, and you are a fit to you so, a cosy will not 